ocean, over the clouds and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now let's have a wild welcome for your fairy friends. Stinky and Shake! Now it's the Animal Show! <laughs> Hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And today our guests are two animals that eat snakes. The mongoose and the secretary bird. Uh, the mongoose? Yeah. That wouldn't by any chance be Ernie the mongoose, would it? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, it is Ernie the mongoose. Why? Oh, boy. You mean, you don't know. No what? Oh, boy. Are we in for it? No what, Stinky? And now it's time for... That's a Amazing! Today we'll find out how the secretary bird got its name. Oh, hey, I know. He's really good at taking dictation, right? Well, actually, Armstrong, there are two theories. Oh. Whoa, get a load of the feathers on his head. One theory says those feathers look so much like old-fashioned quill pens that this bird seems like a secretary ready to take a message. Hey, take a letter to my lawyer. Dear Chucklehead. <laughs> but others think he's called a secretary bird because the Arabic word for this species sounds so much like our word, secretary. Huh. Oh, wait, did I ever tell you about my cousin Al? He, he was secretary. 600 Armstrong. pecks per minute. Armstrong! I'm to... Huh? The secretary bird. Ooh. Yeah, another animal that covers for me when I leave the office early and will make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! Okay, Stinky, now tell me what's the big deal about Ernie the mongoose. Oh, well, don't get me wrong, Jake. He's not all bad. Yeah. Remember when I was having that snake trouble? Mm -hmm. He cleared it right up. So, what's the problem? Hello there! Is anybody home? He sort of likes to take over. Hey, any chance of a fanfare? That's more like it. Hey, guys, are you going to introduce me, or should I send my tail out to be pressed? Uh, uh, yes, uh, here he is from Africa and Asia. Uh, Asia. Uh, Ernie the, the mongoose. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, gentlemen, I, I was waiting so long, I, I had to get two fur cuts, but finally I'm here. Oh, uh, well, it's good to meet you, Ernie. Uh, Stinky has told me a lot about you. Snake trouble last March, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> now, before the moss grows over our feet, let's talk about me, the mongoose. Roll the film. <laughs> oh, there they are, my lovely family. That's my wife, Ernestine, my daughter, Ernestine Jr., and my son, little Ernie. You have beautiful children. Hey, they take after their old man. Uh, where do you where go? Where do we when live? You... Oh, in burrows we dig under the ground. That's one of the entrances right there. Well, who are they? Those are Springbok. They live in our neighborhood. Very quiet. Nice animal. Are there different species of mongoose? I was just going to mention that. Oh. We are what you call yellow mongoose. That's because most of the year our fur is thick and yellow. Are you able to... Jake, can I finish, please? As I was saying, we yellow mongooses have narrow heads, long bodies, and short feet, which is perfect for moving through the tunnels of our burrow. You know, fellas, I love your show, but I think you two guys talk too much. Because we're the now, hosts. Now, what do you say we take a look at a mongoose meal? You, you mean snakes? No, thank you. Today I'm in the mood for scorpions. Scorpions? But don't they have... A poisonous stinger? Yes, they do, Stinky. But that doesn't scare me. Or at least it doesn't scare your wife, Ernestine. <laughs> oh, that's very cute. You see, fellas, it's like this. We mongooses are famous for going after poisonous animals that other animals are afraid to attack. Well, doesn't their poison harm you? Well, yes, it does. But the trick is to bite off the tail before he has a chance to sting you. But if they can sting you, why do you go after them? Because we're so fast and the scorpion can't catch us. Because we're brave and we fear no animal. Because... You're hungry and there's nothing else to eat. Well, yes, that too. When you've got a family like mine, to feed, you go after whatever you can find. Well, now, is it true that the yes, young Yes, is it true that young mongooses have to learn what's safe to eat before they can be allowed to go off on their own? Yeah. Yes, Jake, it is absolutely true. Well, I guess they have to learn to watch out for lions, too. Well, yes, you can never be too safe, Stinky, but we mongooses aren't large enough for most lions to bother chasing. Looks like Ernestine isn't taking any chances. If she sees any danger, she lets out a loud chirping sound and gets the kids down the burrow fast. Ernie, could you tell us about Jake, the... Jake, I hate to tell you how to do your job, but just let the guests lead the interview, okay? For instance, now I'd like to tell you about one of my cousins, the Marsh Mongoose. I even 
brought some pictures. Of the marsh mongoose? Sure. That's my cousin there, Arnie. Ho <laughs> ho. He's what you call a marsh mongoose because he always lives by a marsh or stream. And if you think what I eat is strange, wait till you see what Arnie likes to eat. Oh, look, a baby crocodile. That is Arnie's dinner. <laughs> he eats crocodiles? Ah, Only the tiny ones. And he's especially fond of crocodile eggs. He's a brave fella, but he's not dumb enough to tackle a full-size croc like this one. Anyway, here's what happens. One day, you're taking a walk down the beach, and the next thing you know, you see a crocodile nest and a bunch of eggs. Oh, well, it would be a shame to let something like that go to waste now. Well, Arnie better watch out for that mama crocodile. Oh, don't worry. Arnie knows she's there. Why doesn't he leave then? Well, carrying crocodile eggs is not easy for a mongoose. He pretty much has to eat the eggs right there by the nest. But isn't the mama crocodile going to be mad? Oh, she's going to be mad, all right. And if there's one thing Arnie has told me a million times, it's that crocodiles are a lot faster than they look. I'll take his word for it. Same here. Oh, here she comes. Looks like Arnie smells that croc headed his way. No use taking any chances. This is a good time to grab the shell and head on home. Uh, well, Ernie, it's been a real pleasure to oh, have you. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Oh, I know what you're hey. going to say. Well, you want me to stick around and help you with the rest of the show. Uh, well, so uh, let's keep things moving, shall we? Let's take a look at some cute little mongoose kids on Baby, Baby Talk. Talk. <laughs> What's happening? Not much, Marigold. Wanna play? Hey, Milk! Tansy wants to play! Oh, good. Uh, can I play too? Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, now, if I can just figure out how to get down. Oh, there. Uh, hey, wait for me, huh? Let's play hide and seek. It's my favorite. Oh, oh good idea. I love hide and seek. Okay, you hide first. Okay, here I am. Uh, what are we playing? Playing hide and seek, and Tansy's hiding first. Hi, Tansy. Uh, gee, where's Tansy? I don't know. Uh, do you see Tansy? Oh, no, not me. We'd better go look for her. Oh, yeah, good idea. Uh, go this way. Oh, oh, love this game. You see, that's the kind of thing that the little animals out there want to see. Cute babies. Now what you need is a change of pace. Well, how about a song about eating snakes? Um, I've got it. How about a song about eating snakes? Roll film. Make it quick, because it's not exactly safe around here for snakes. Here goes. Which of the following birds is the closest relative to the secretary bird? Is it the yellow-billed stork, the Galapagos hawk, the curry bustard, or the purple heron? Oh. Your answer. Uh, look, I don't know the answer, but I just saw a secretary bird. Can you get me out of here fast? Sure. <laughs> Trap door! Hey! Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> and now, the answer. A close relative of the secretary bird is the Galapagos hawk. The Galapagos hawk is not really a hawk, but a buzzard. As you may have guessed from its name, it lives on the Galapagos Islands, and there are only a few hundred Galapagos hawks left. This is one of them. 
Galapagos hawks feed on dead animals which they find, but will also kill lizards, small iguanas, and young fledgling birds. Their relatives on the mainland will eat small mammals, but as there are no native mammals on the Galapagos Islands, mammals obviously cannot be a part of this bird's diet. Here is a Galapagos hawk sitting on the back of a giant tortoise. They often sit here because it's a good place from which to scan the ground looking for potential prey. It works for the hawk, and the tortoise doesn't seem to mind. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on the Galapagos hawk. Back to you, Stinky and Jake. I tell you, fellas, all the big nature show hosts wear pith helmets. They make you look, um, like adventurers. I feel ridiculous. You look ridiculous. Now, the next big thing I think you should do is get rid of that cooking cockroach. Hey, you do have some good ideas. Thank you. Here's Eve. Bonjour, my petite animal friends. Today, I... Yves Saint Laurent, I'm going Eve, to be my friend. Oh. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy your part of the show. Oh, thank you. Except for the silly accent. What? Glad I could help. Oops. Don't thank me. Oh, oh, don't worry, I'm not going to thank you. Huh? As I was saying, today I was going to show you how to feed the mongoose, but I do not like this mongoose. So, I am not going to feed him this delicious basket of snakes. Instead, I am going to play a song my dear maman used to sing to me. <laughs> Would you believe it? It is a snack! <laughs> oh, oh, get off me! Oh, 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 get off me! Oh, oh, oh! Thanks, Eve. Now, Ernie, it's been great having you on the show, but it's time to bring out our next guest. So oh, say no go. more, Jake. I know exactly what you want. So no, you don't. You go. You go for Ernie. Ernie. A little rest. Ernie. Ernie. Great guys. Ernie. 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 Just, Ernie. Just, Ernie. Wait Just wait there. over there. Wait over there, and I'll take care of this interview. <laughs> Hello there, friends. And now it's time for an interview, Ernie Stein. I can't believe he took over the show. I can't believe we're still wearing these silly hats. And now it's my pleasure to bring out someone I've known for years, even though we've never actually met. Here he is, all the way from Africa. Africa. Thank you. My close personal friend, Kyle the Secretary Bird. Hold everything. Who's this guy? I thought I was supposed to talk to a polar bear and a skunk. Oh, Kyle, it's good to see you again for the first time. Where are Stinky and Jake? Oh, they're right over there. Hi. Hi. Boy, those are silly hats. And speaking of silly hats, let's take a look at some secretary birds. Silly hat? These are my feathers. No, in a minute, in a minute. First, I want to know why those two birds are standing on top of a tree. That's when we secretary birds build our nests, at the top of thorny trees. All right. Now, what's with your silly hat? It is not the hat. Those feathers on top of our head are called our crest. How big are you guys? I mean, you're not exactly sparrow size, are you? No, we're not. An adult male secretary bird stands about four feet high and has a wingspan of seven feet. Well, with all that wing, why are those two birds walking? Wouldn't it be faster to fly? No, secretary birds hardly ever fly. We prefer to walk, sometimes as much as 20 miles a day. It's also how we find our food. Ooh, food, my favorite subject. Ah, huh. well, this secretary boy has spotted a locust hiding in the grass. You eat bugs? Of course. And once we see the locust, we use our feet to stomp on them. Crushed locust? Is that any good? Well, it's very nutritious, but it's not very filling. You must have to eat a lot of locusts to fill a bird as big as you. Well, we also eat beetles, lizards, turtles, and other small animals. Now, I understand you and I have something in common. We both love to eat snake. Oh, yeah, I love snake. We secretary birds are great snake hunters. Same here. So what do you do? Do you wrestle with them or what? Same as we do with locusts. We stomp them. Come on, you're pulling my tail. You just watch. Our feet are perfect for the job. And a secretary bird can hit its prey with a force that's powerful enough to break a human being's arm. He'll keep stomping until there's no sign of life. That boy won't eat or move the snake until he's sure there's no chance of getting bitten. That's a very, very good idea, and that snake looks so tasty. Hmm. And now I'd like to show you some pictures of my family. Ooh, family pictures. Animals love that stuff. Let's see them. All right. 
That's my little Kyle. He's a scrappy young fella. Oh, he's cute. Well, for a bird, I mean. And that's one of our nests. You have more than one nest? Oh, yeah. Secretary Boyd's have as many as six nests spread over ten square miles. Nice. That means no matter where you go, you're close to home. What a good idea. Now, what's that you're about to feed little Kyle? What else? Snake strips. But it's tough for a little fella to eat pieces that are big. So we usually have to chew it up and then spit it out for him to eat it. Mm. Oh, hold the phone. What's this all about? Oh, well, Secretary Boyd's are very territorial. Look, I don't care who you voted for. No, I just no, no, you don't understand. Territorial means we don't want other animals coming near our nests. So we do this. What, you dance with them? When we spread our wings like that, it makes us look bigger. That's called a threat display. It's usually enough to scare off most trouble. Hey, and when all else fails, you can always stomp on them, right? <laughs> or, if we really have to, we can fly off into the clouds. Well, Kyle, it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, I've always wanted to meet a mongoose, the second best snake hunters in the world. Oh, that's very kind of you. No, wait a minute, what do you mean, second best? We're number one. No, sir, it's the secretary, Bite. It's, it's the mongoose. The bite. It's the mongoose. It's the secretary, It's the mongoose. Hey, hey, it's the hey, hey, mongoose. I'm telling you. Now, Kyle, we want you to sing a song. Gladly. And Ernie, mm -hmm. we need to talk. Oh, but Jake, come on. Right after the song. <laughs> Here's a little something I plucked out. I don't go right in Shakespeare. Take me at my word. To think I take dictation is really quite absurd. I have no education, so give a guy a break. The only thing I like to do is how to kill a snake. That's not true. You should see me take short feather. Someone in their wisdom called me Secretary Boyd Isn't that the dumbest thing a guy has ever heard? I'll never make a home of Plato, or well Boynes or Blake The only thing I'll ever write, R.I.P. dear snake That would be R for S, I for N, and P for peace Is there anyone out there? It seems to me this mongoose has had it far too good this pussy little fella should get it understood. He's not the only one around who catches snakes I've heard. That honor he must share with me, the secretary boy. <laughs> great song, Kyle. Ernie, now listen, it's great having you on the show, but you can't come in and just take over. That's my job. Oh, Jake, when you're right, you're right. And right now, let's watch Animal Awards! No! <sighs> and now it's time for... Animal Awards! Today we'll find out which bird is the tallest. Oh, hey, that would be my Uncle Stretch Chicken Hut. Oh, Armstrong! What? I mean, which of these birds is the tallest? Oh. Is it the ostrich? Hmm, the emu? Or the secretary bird? And the winner is... The ostrich, which stands up to seven feet high. Wow, making my Uncle Stretch look like a shrimp. The ostrich, winner of today's Animal Award. <laughs> and now it's time... Here you go, Jake. I picked out a great story for you to read. You picked out the story? Mm-hmm. It's about a mongoose. Should have known. <clears throat> Okay, once upon a time, there was a marsh mongoose named Monique. One day, Monique was looking for something delicious to eat. She looked and looked until finally she found it. The perfect shellfish. Smash! Monique tried to get it open. Smash! She tried and tried. But as hard as she tried to smash it, she couldn't get it open. Nor could she bite it open. Oh, open up, you selfish shellfish, she cried. And then with one final smash, it opened. Monique was starving after all that smashing, so she gobbled up the shellfish. 
and lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, wasn't that a beautiful story? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, don't you have to go? Go? I just got here. <laughs> now, guys, I was thinking, whenever you did something funny, you could honk a little horn like this. <laughs> mm. <sighs> it's habitat time. So, uh, where, where, where are we going today, Bunny? Armstrong, <laughs> what's with the horn? Oh, uh, I'm just taking some of Ernie's suggestions to hide. Oh. Uh, habitat time needs some punching up, and I'm the bird to punch it up. <laughs> then punch it through here. Oh. The East African grasslands. Mm. Oh, look, zebra. <laughs> Armstrong, keep it down. <laughs> you disturb them. <laughs> oh, now look what you've done. That wasn't me. It's just the zebras on their annual migration. Oh, look, elephants. <laughs> you see, <laughs> it sounds just like them. <laughs> oh, the African elephant is the largest living land mammal. Hey, uh, what are those two guys doing? Those bulls are fighting for territory. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Uh, you don't want that black rhino to charge, do you? No, I'd rather he paid with cash. <laughs> oh, the black rhino is a vegetarian, and it's an endangered species still hunted for its horns. It's not funny. Hey, what's that? A water buck. Oh, and that there is an egret. Uh, with a flock of sacred ibis. I know my birds. <laughs> ibis <laughs> wade in the marshes looking for food. Hey, there's a water buck again. Armstrong, will you stop honking <laughs> that horn? You do not want to disturb these Cape buffalo. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind saying to those ostriches. <laughs> ostriches are the largest and strongest of any <laughs> living bird. And until humans started eating them, were found only in Africa. Here are our old friends, the zebras again. <laughs> oh, that's it. I've had enough. Come on. Armstrong, will you please stop honking that horn? Yeah, okay, I'll stop. I'll Fine. Stop. For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And I'm showing the chicken hook. Just back from the East African grasslands. Thank you. You're welcome. Over to you, Rhonda. Oh, Armstrong! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Well, that's all the time we have, and I'd like to thank our special guests, Kyle the Secretary Bird, and our permanent guest, Ernie the Mongoose. Look, Ernie, uh, the show's almost over. You really have to go. I do? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to. <laughs> Uh, what is it, Ernie? Oh, well, it's just that Ernestine and the kids are visiting her mom, so I'm home all alone. That's why I didn't want to leave. Oh, <laughs> oh Ernie! Nobody likes uh, why to go home to an empty yeah, bar. Yeah, you should have said so. Uh, you can stay with us. Yeah. Again? Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you know what else? What? what? Until next time, remember, keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. That was my line. Yeah, but didn't you like the way I delivered it? You know, with a kind of smile on my voice? I'm not a million lights. This is so 